and I, I'm just curious, you know, I because I do get a, a lot of connection requests, mm-hmm. and the first thing I always do is, I'll, first of all, I'll just say if there's a, me- I'll see if there's a message, mm-hmm. and then I'll click on on their picture to go to their profile to see if I can find out anything more about them. Mm-hmm. What would you say would be the three most important things to do? that people will instantly see when they do that and go and click and look at somebody else's profile. Okay. One of the most important things to do on your LinkedIn profile is write a headline that attracts attention because until you have a headline, so the headline, so mine is like Louise Brogan, LinkedIn consultant, podcaster. I think at the moment it's um, speaking at podcast movement 2020. People see your headline and that's what directs them to actually click on your profile in the first place. So if you haven't got a great headline, people won't even click on your profile. So you're not even getting them to the front door of your house. Then once they get to your profile, the about section is so important. And where a lot of people make a mistake here, Trudy, is they write the about section about themselves. And that is the big thing for if you are in business, if you are an entrepreneur, an SME, and people go to your profile, it should not be about you it should be about them. It needs to be, how can you help? So if I go to your profile and I'm reading through your about section, I want to know how you can help me. It's all about me. I mean, the internet is all me, 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 me. And, you know, people who are like, oh, that's not true. I mean, you can, you can, you can look at this in any way you want, but if you want to get ahead in business, you've got to make it all about the person who's reading the content that you're putting out and not just about you because it's going to help you so much more when you are sharing how you can help somebody. So the about section should be, should start out with how you can help the person that's reading it. And that's, what's going to attract their attention. Um, And then the third thing, so the first thing is the headline. The second thing is starting the about section with being about the reader, not about you. And the third thing is having a call to action in that about section that says, uh, contact me, send me a message, reach out to me. Here's my phone number. Here's my email. Whatever way you want that person to get in touch with you, direct them to contact you because without that um, extra step, less people will actually contact you. People need a bit of direction. Yeah, they just need to know what to do next. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got a bunch of questions, um, but I thought I'd just check first. Do you, did you have anything that you wanted to specifically share around LinkedIn that you wanted to share with the listeners or shall we jump straight into some other questions? Well, I have a very specific framework that I help people with, which might be helpful for people listening um, in terms of how to use LinkedIn. And it's a, it's a four part framework. The first part being um, having a good, strong LinkedIn profile. And that's the piece of work that I was doing with you, Trudy, was mm-hmm. you know, looking through your LinkedIn profile and how you'd make changes. The second part is building a network Um, of people that are going to help you in business. So it's clients, customers, potential clients and customers, potential collaborators, people you're interested in. So building a genuine network as opposed to a network as big as possible. The third thing is um, sharing content. So what content are you going to put on LinkedIn that is going to showcase your knowledge and expertise and help you build your business? And the fourth part, if you think of this as like a four piece jigsaw puzzle, um, the fourth part is understanding how to use LinkedIn Messenger or the in-mail system that is going to help you to actually grow the business and win business. So that's the framework that I use with people, the, the profile, the network, the content and using LinkedIn Messenger. And of course, there's, there's so much more to it than that. But those are the four key pieces that I I start out helping people with and then we move on mm-hmm. to other stuff so i just wanted to share that that's i think without think of it as like a stool and um, like a three-legged stool the seat being the profile and the three legs being messaging content and network and if you take one of those things away the whole stool falls to the ground and isn't as useful yeah yeah for sure i've got some questions around um that the in the in mail side of things yeah. one Things, one of the questions that our, our online business liftoff participants ask us the most is, you know, do I need a premium account? Um, because, you know, you can send people messages and things like that without it. But mm-hmm. if, you don't, if you're not connected with somebody, then there's rules around who you can approach and who you can't. 
Yes. And, and so can you just talk a little bit about that particular part of your framework for a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So the premium service, when I'm working with a client, I say get your foundations right first before you start spending money on premium services. So it's more important that you have a good, strong profile and that you understand the kind of content to share on LinkedIn. First of all, um, I worked with a lovely American client last year. Um, and whenever we, we had the profile sorted, we talked about potential posts to put out there. So this is the start of working together. And she came back to me a week later and said, Louise, I, I tried those posts, but I didn't get any, any engagement on them. And I said, well, how many people are in your network? And she said, 37. And I said, well, you, you need all of these parts to be working. And 37 is not a strong enough network size on LinkedIn. You want to have at least 500 in your network because the chances of anyone actually seeing that post and commenting on it are so small. You've got to build a decent sized network. So at least, at least 500, I would say, Trudy, but probably heading towards a couple of thousand um, if you can. And if the thought of that is really daunting to people, I don't mean go out and connect with all those people today. I mean, build it up over time. Um, but the, the premium services, the benefits of using LinkedIn premium, and I have a couple of blogs about this on my website, which is socialbni.com, um, are the number one benefit for me is that I can see who's been viewing my profile. Why is that relevant? Because people will reach out to me um, people will check you out on LinkedIn before they'll make any connection request or any move to reach out to you. I do quite a lot of work with corporate teams from all over the place, all, all around the world. Um, and if I see a business development manager has been looking at my profile or a marketing director or a sales team leader has been looking at my profile, I might reach out to that person. Now, if, if we're connected, then I will reach. I'll send them a message and say, Hi Paul, how are things going in London? Um, that I'd reach, I'd check, you know, I'd just check in with you, because I know they've been looking at my profile. Without premium, you can only see that the last one or two people that have looked at your profile, so you're missing out on that key interest or like warm leads who are looking, who are checking you out online. Um, so that's one really key thing. If you are working with larger organisations when you have premium, you can go to the, that company's company page and you can see key insights into that company. So you can see the size of the company and what percentage are working in which area. If they're recruiting, you can see their most recent relevant, important, what LinkedIn calls it's important hires. So maybe a new CEO or a new CFO. Um, so you can get a lot of information about companies that you might want to approach if you have premium. And you also have this uh, thing called in-mail where you can send a message to somebody who is not in your first or second connection circle. So somebody you've got no connection with, you can send them um, a personalized message to reach out to them without being connected to them. I don't tend to do that because I think connecting with somebody first and then sending them a message is much a, it's a far warmer lead. I mean, LinkedIn really focuses on social selling. So it's rare that I reach out to somebody completely cold. Um, and of course, I reach out to somebody if I wanted to get in with a, a company and I, I knew that they could really help do some help on LinkedIn training. I would absolutely reach out to those people, but I wouldn't dive straight in and say, oh, I run LinkedIn workshops. Would you be interested? That, that's not what I do. I, I would reach out to somebody, connect with them, have them in my network, and remembering sending the personalized message. And then if they posted something and I comment on it, then, then I might say, but well, normally what happens is people will come back to me and say, oh, that's really, in, I'm interested in what you do, Louise, and like to know more about it. Um, that is the way I use LinkedIn. And it's, it's a much friendlier, warmer approach than just sending a, an email to somebody who's in my third level connection who I don't really have any actual connection with. Yeah, going sell, sell, sell. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's no. Thank you for that. That's uh, that's that's interesting. I didn't know that you could get more uh, data or or information about a company or a business. Uh, well, sorry, Trudy. The third thing as well. Apologies for interrupting you. That's right. With premium, you have access to all of LinkedIn's learning platform, that's which right. teach teaches you it, like so many things from how to do yoga at your desk to how to build a sales pipeline, 
to how to um, do public speaking. Um, there, like there is a wealth of information in there. And all of the people who have training courses in there have been verified by LinkedIn as well. So that's another thing that people aren't aware of. So LinkedIn learning is very, very um, useful. And if you have premium, you have access to all of that as well. Okay. And so bringing it back to my, my, my listeners and where they are in their journey, a lot of them are still kind of in between that process of moving out of corporate and, in, and into becoming a small business owner. Mm -hmm. Or for some of the people, um, you know, they've, they've been doing something else in their life and now it's time to start a business and they, and they get started. But whichever one of those scenarios it is, they're having to make that mental transition from the person that they were into the person that they are in terms of being a small business owner. Yeah. And how would you recommend using your past history, your past work history section of LinkedIn to be mm. able to promote your business in a meaningful way? Because I know so many people, me included for the longest time, mm -hmm. used to use that part of it as being the substitute for a CV. That was the bit that yes. was the CV. So how, what, how, how should people use that part of LinkedIn? Okay, so LinkedIn is, if, if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, and you're starting out, um, you have to rethink the entire way you've looked at LinkedIn when you were in a job. So in a, if someone's listening to this and they are in a, in a job and they want to use LinkedIn for career progression, all the things I'm talking about are completely different. I mean, a lot of it's the same in terms of connecting with people and building relationships. But it's, it's definitely, you definitely write your profile differently. But for people who have moved into entrepreneurship, I would go back through my experience section and I would take out, um, if you've done, so like a lot of people, truly, a lot of people have done 10 jobs over the last 15 years. It's not like you used to get a job for life. So if there were jobs in the like 10, 10, 15 years ago in your profile that you did for six months here or nine months there while you were looking for your dream job, for example, I would take those out unless they're relevant to what you're doing now. Um, I would reduce down my experience section in terms of, so I was a 10 years as an IT project manager in the health service in the UK. I could write 500 words about, well, I could write a lot more about what I did in that role, what I was responsible for, the teams that, that, that um, I worked with, the experience that I had, the seniority of people I worked with, blah, blah, blah. It's not relevant to what I'm doing now, but what is relevant is that it, as like a really small part of that job, I taught, I developed programs for um, community health staff, so OTs, nurses, physios, I developed programs. I liaised with software companies. So there are little parts of that that relate to the fact that I now teach people and, and I'm very comfortable teaching people from all backgrounds and all levels. So that's included in there. I don't take this, I don't take it out. I don't take out the fact that before that job, I did two and a half years as a software engineer because even though teaching people LinkedIn has got nothing to do with Java programming, it still gives a wee bit of, of um, weight and credibility that I had this software engineering role. It just, people, people's mindsets are interesting things and how they view is very interesting, but that does give me weight and credibility. Those, those two key roles that I did before I started my business do matter to people, um, especially the corporate teams that I did, that I work with. The fact that I worked in corporate is a plus, even though it, it shouldn't really be, but it does impact it. So those are in there, but they are condensed down because when, when someone is doing a search on LinkedIn for um, software engineer, I don't want my profile to appear in those search results. I want my profile to appear as a trainer, a speaker, a podcaster, a LinkedIn consultant. So I want my profile to be top heavy with information about what it is that I do now. And I don't want to be found for Java programming. So software engineers in my profile, but doesn't say what I did in that role. Um, so go back through your profile, try your very best to strip it out. Um, again, this is something I do for people. I, I do LinkedIn profile reviews and I say, look, maybe I'd condense that down a bit, but keep that bit. Um, you can also add in media. So if in your previous job, if you were invited to speak at conferences, even if it's not on what you do now, you can have a clip of you speaking on stage that shows that you're comfortable speaking on a stage because what you're doing now, there will be conferences around whatever it is that you're working on now in business. 
and you already have this public speaking experience. So why not have that in your profile? Um, it shows that you have been a speaker before. It doesn't matter that before you spoke about um, kitchens and now you're speaking about, um, I don't know, selling horses, <laughs> really random examples. But it shows that you have the art of public speaking. So really, it's really important to have a good, strong profile and to pick out the bits of your previous career that reflect on what you're doing now without overwhelming what it is you're doing now. Hopefully that, um, that makes sense. 